Okay, next I'm going to solve a problem using the crystal ball in conjunction with Excel Solver. And I'm going to work a, a problem out of your textbook on page 620 from chapter 12. It's problem number 8, dealing with WVTU television station from the Cohen text. So if you haven't read over this problem yet, please go ahead and stop this video and study that, study that problem. Again, it's problem number 8 on page 620 and then restart the video. Okay, so we've got uh, 20 spots available that we can sell and our decision is, is right here. How many should we sell in advance for $4,500? I'll just put a zero in there for now. Um, next, uh, how many are held back is just the difference between the total slots and so D9 minus D10 is how many we've held back and next we have how many we can sell at the last minute now how many we can sell or we do sell actually is the based on this distribution over here. So this is a custom made distribution. This is the demand that we can sell at the last minute and these are the probabilities. So this is a custom made probability distribution. So how many we can sell though is the minimum of how many we've held back. Because if we've only held back say 10 but we can sell you know, based on demand, 19, we're only going to sell uh, 10. So it's the minimum of what we've held back. Wait a second, I've got to go back to this. It's the minimum of what we've held back, comma, and then we're going to put in this custom function so we'll do CB, which tells us it's a crystal ball function, and it's going to be a custom-made function of the range, of this range here, like that, and then we need to close it off twice. That should do it. You see that again? So it's the minimum of D11, what we've held back, or what the demand is. And then whatever's left over, we're going to use another function here. So when you're setting up your spreadsheets, you can use min functions, max functions, maybe some ifs. You know, any, any type of the functions can be used on your spreadsheet. So I'll use a max function here of what's left over is going to be either 0 or the difference between uh, what's held back and what we sell at the last minute. And we'll close that off then. So in this case, if we hold back 20 and we sell 18 at the last minute, we've got two, we've got two to sell uh, at the leftover rate. So uh, the reason you need the max function in there and of zero and, and, and the difference is because what if you hold back um, you hold back, well, not enough, and then at the last minute, the demand is higher. So uh, that takes into consideration so that it doesn't go negative. Um, all right, next, we can put the functions in, the, um, the profit. So here it's D10 times E10 is the advance. Whatever we uh, hold back times 4,500. Uh, last minute is what we sell at last minute times the 8,000 revenue that we get. And leftover is the amount that we sell left over, that's left over that we don't sell, times the revenue there. Um, close that off. 
this is the sum then of all three. Just this range. And close that up. Earlier I said that you could define uh, your your probabilities in a different different way. One way to do that is by defining assumption. I'll just go up here and click on this link and show you all the possibilities for probability distributions. Okay. Discrete distributions. The yes no is a binomial. And by the way, for your homework problem dealing with the Harriet Hotel, you're going to use the binomial. So you can do CB dot uh, binomial and then put it in, or you can use this link here. Either way. But I'm not going to define anything here. But there are a couple things that we do have to define. First, we said that our decision is how many to sell in advance. So I'm going to put that as defined decision. And the lower bound and upper bound, well, we can, we can sell up to 20. So I'll put the lower bound 0 up to 20. And that is discrete with a step size of 1. So it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 20. Okay. Notice it turns it yellow then, that, because that's your decision. And I'm going to define this as the forecast. And I just take the defaults, uh, units, we don't have to specify it's dollars. but Okay, and it turns it turquoise. And now I want to simulate it. But I want to simulate it for zero soul in advance, one soul in advance, two soul in advance, three soul in advance, all the way up to 20. Now we could do that uh, manually by hitting start and then, and then changing it to one, two, three, and, and so on. But Crystal Ball has this really neat tool. If you go to the tools menu, it's called the decision table. I recommend that you use this because that's going to be a lot easier than doing it manually. So in your decision table, the total is, is what we're forecasting. So we take, select that. Sold in advance is our decision variable. Notice that you can have more than one decision variable in here, but we only have one. And then we'll go on to next. And I'm going to test 21 values, because it's changing it from 0 all the way up to 20. So that's 21 values for 1,000 trials. That's fine. Take the default. Um, and we'll take the defaults here and just start it. So there we go. It's, it's simulating a thousand trials for each one. It goes pretty quickly. And then it builds this table for us. And it tells us the best option as we go across is to sell well, let's see. Eight. Sell eight in advance. Hold back twelve. If we sell thirty in advance, or sorry, if we sell twenty in advance, our, our revenue is ninety thousand. But our expected revenue is one hundred twenty-eight eight hundred if we sell seven in advance. That's pretty good. Okay. There's some charts you can take a look at. And I'll select I'll select the cell. Okay, there's some forecast charts. And we can view cumulative frequency. Let's view some statistics. It tells us the mean, the high, and the low and other useful information. And you can use this, these statistics and charts, the uh, cumulative chart for the probabilities to answer the questions that are posed in the, in the textbook. So that's how you do it. Um, good luck.